So you're a big, intimidating dude. I mean, 6'4", 250. Uh, tell about this uh, barbed wire oh, tattoo that you have. I got it when I was 18 years old. I don't know why I got it. I, I was a skinny runt back then, too. I thought maybe I thought I was tough. I got it the spring of my freshman year in college. Um, I was 18, so I, this next year it'll be 18 years since I've had it. So uh, tell about why it fails to go all the way around your oh, arm. It, did, it used to connect right there, and then my arms got bigger. Oh, really? That, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I, I, I was told no. something else. I, uh, I, it hurt yeah, like I hell. Like it, hurt, it hurt like hell, man. I, uh, I was, he was getting in there, and I was like, he goes, it's going to hurt. And I was like, all right, cool. And he got closer. I said, I don't want it anymore. Just make it look cool. And he made, if you look, it makes it look like it connects and goes into my skin right there. No one ever sees the inside. You're not supposed to. But... Um, it, it hurt like hell. I was only 18, you know, I wasn't very tough back then. So I, uh, I didn't get it finished. So I understand you're a pretty big prankster, and I wanted you to give us some insight into some of the things you do. So a few that I'm familiar with, uh, the water balloon attacks? The water, <laughs> I have a store of water balloon upstairs in my, in my bathroom drawer somewhere. No one knows where they are, but they're hidden up there. And uh, we'll go, I have a balcony off my room, so we'll go up there and just bomb people off my balcony. It, they're lucky it's not eggs, because most of the time, when my brother's out there mowing, I'll just grab like four eggs. I'll try and I'll sneak up on him and just start bombing him with eggs. You get him? <laughs> I haven't hit him yet, man. I can't get close enough to hit him. Plus, I don't. It hurts. I got hit in the back of the head with an egg, uh, or in the <laughs> back, right in the back, about two weeks ago with an egg when I was out there trying to start the fire. Uh, I have a fire pit, so I was trying to start a fire in the fire pit, and somebody bl blasted me in the back with an egg, and it didn't feel good. So I just try and land them around people, okay. so it scares them, and it works pretty good. They still get scared. How about the uh, stop and scream on the highway? That's the best one. If someone falls asleep on the car, if now the new thing is people start texting them when they, when you know, they're passing the seat, they're texting. So when I see them not paying attention, we just hit the brakes and everybody screams. Oh, what do you do? Scream loud. What do I do when I'm driving? Laugh. <laughs> you know, you could tell my brother and I have a little system we'll like make some alcohol or something, and we know what's going on, so we just hit the brakes and scream. And the kid, the kids don't even get scared anymore. They they're just like, nice try, Dad. You know, you got to get some new people in the car to make them scream. Did you really once wait a half hour in the, in the past few years, half hour under your brother Casey's bed to scare him? <laughs> that was like 2004. It was up here. And, and yeah, but I did do it. I, I asked him when he was coming home, trying to act like I was checking on him. And then I crawled up under his bed and I watched him brush his teeth. I watched him go, <laughs> go to the bathroom. He was in, his, in the, in the uh, bathroom and then I hid under the bed. <laughs> and then he got in bed. I scared the crap out of him. What do you, did, he yeah, you got Yeah, he got scared. I mean, what would you do if you thought you were getting in the bed and no one was in your room and someone jumped up on you and scared you? I've done that play. I mean, there's been plenty of times where I've scared him like that. You know, I used to always call him, hey man, when are you gonna be home? You know, we're gonna lock the door, set the alarm. I need to know, so I get a time when he's gonna be home so I can know when to go into his room and get set up. Anybody uh, ever get you? I've been God, and it's hard to get me because you just can't scare me. I always <laughs> feel like someone's trying to scare me, that's why, because I'm always on edge. Uh, I have been scared, my kids scare me. I think people get me on accident most of the time because I'm not, like, when I'm really not paying attention, they'll get me, but for the most part, I feel like I'm always on edge because I feel like someone's always trying to get me. Tell about the bet you made with your brother, Casey, that he'd be unable to shoot under a 130 <laughs> oh. playing by USGA so golf I remember rules. at a golf course over here called the Merit Club, and we went out. This was, God, this is a Super Bowl year. During training camp of the Super Bowl year, we made a bet that he could not shoot un under 130 playing by USGA rules from the tips. Um, the bet was, I bet him like $15,000 that he couldn't do it. And we had side bets with guys in Vegas. We had, our, our, we had people calling in making bets. You serious? And the bet was if he loses, he has to shave an eyebrow and let his hair grow out for 18 months. One eyebrow and the hair grow out for 18 months. So he has hair, and we were both bald. So that was the bet. Um, the first hole, he had too many clubs in his bag. Two-stroke penalty. <laughs> but we told him, you know, he's, if we didn't tell him, he'd have had two strokes every hole. But we told him. He was so pissed. So he took the club out of his bag. Um, he uh, he ended up shooting like 57 on the front, which is good if you're trying to shoot 130. 57 is pretty good. He was put, he had a caddy. We had like seven carts out there, and he was the only one playing. So we were all yelling. Right, we, he hit a shot in the water. We'd all start screaming, you know. Uh, and it ended up coming down to uh, 17 and 18. I think he made an 11 on 16, uh, 10 on 17. I think he had to make a nine or better to win on 18. I think he made seven. He ended up shooting 127. So. 
he was shaking. Like on, he's left-handed, he's backwards, so he's shaking putting on 17, 18. I mean, it was it was unbelievable. He was just trying not. He hits a big slice and he's left-handed, so it goes straight left. He was aiming 60 yards right of the fairway, just trying not to hit the ball in the water on a couple holes. It was one of the best days of my life. <laughs> it was one. But you it. lost the bet. I don't care. It was worth every yeah. penny of it, man. It was so funny. And the side bets we had going on with the, our buddies in Vegas, people calling in, checking to see what he was doing, where he was at. And him, the interaction between him and his caddy, the caddy told him just aim as far right as you can so you don't hit it in the bunker, you don't hit it in the water. It was just, it was awesome. We had, we've done a few more like that, but nothing as intense as that one. Now he's a lot better, though. Yeah. We played there, I think he shot 122 or 123. <laughs> right. He never plays, man. The guy's working, he's busy, and he, didn't, he doesn't get, get out as much as I do. You, you think he would have followed through if he lost? 100%. Well, we, we had one a little bit later, and he lost, and he had to grow his hair out for six months, and he grew it out for a month. I said, you got to cut your hair. He, his, his his hairline starts back here. It was like Bozo the Clown. I said, dude, you got to cut your hair, man. It was during training camp. He came up to watch practice. I said, bro, you got to cut your hair. I can't even look at you, man. It's too funny. And he doesn't wear a hat. Like, I wear a hat every day. He never wears a hat. So I said, Casey, you got to cut it. It's, it's too long, man. <laughs> he looked funny because we haven't had hair since we were kids.